Greetings, I'm Solid Scully, and welcome back to the final part of the Silent Hill Shattered Memories commentary. And oh no, Dahlia has changed her appearance and frozen over again? Rest in peace, Dahlia. Your conclusion was as cold hearted as your personality. But yeah, Harry's uh, Alex Shepard get up has suddenly disappeared and now seems to be replaced with something far less adaptive to the cold. I. Wouldn't want to be wearing those sorts of clothes in this sort of temperature, but hey, who am I to judge? It's for uh, nostalgic purposes. And yeah, final nightmare, well, final nightmare slash other word sequence of the game, and uh, unlike last time, no flares, no sonic music. This time, we gotta be in it to win it. I literally have no idea why I'm talking this way, but uh, yeah, we're pretty much in in-game territory at this point. Really isn't much to say other than. Reach for the truth, and it will find you. Harry! Turn back! I can't. It's too late now. For our daughter's sake! Even Dream Dahlia, the angry one, is deterring us from finding out the truth. But we must press on. We can't let her stop us anymore. And, uh, yeah, basically, in a similar adventure to Silent Hill 2, actually, we must follow the light. Because if we do not follow the light, we will not have a party tonight. And that's what Sybil sent us. Hmm, who could she be? And she has a criminal record, too. Must be, must be from that, uh, little stabbing incident she did to Malcolm. She didn't like that guy. She liked, uh, that he let him, uh, take a few objects, but when it came to Malcolm himself, no way, Jose! But, uh, yeah. Seems that, uh, daddy's little girl ain't a girl no more. Yeah, might as well get a Nirvana song to round out the singing trio parody. And, uh, yeah. This is actually a bit of a weird inverse sort of thing. You do have to follow the light, but, uh, you know, since we have no flares and the Rorschach seem to be appearing in front of us. Seems like we don't really have much of a choice but to uh, fight our way through it, or die trying. Hint the hint 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 hintison. But yeah, like, I mean... Well, I mean, if this other world sequence hasn't scared you enough already, I guess maybe this could be in initially seen as a bit of an oh shit kind of moment, especially given the fact that you have no flares to keep you safe. But I mean, uh... Yeah, and you can also notice that the, uh... Rorschach's appearance has changed again, for the last time. And yes, this will be the last time, because we can't escape anymore. I can I don't know if it's like a certain threshold or whatever that uh, that stops you from getting there. I'm guessing it is, since you can't seem to shake them off at this point, but... I'm wondering if you can actually die earlier and just, you know, have it begin that way, because... Well, I mean, aside from the fact that we suck and are dead, something mysterious begins to happen. The raw shocks back off, and due to Harry's powers, they freeze. That's right. We don't need them anymore, and Harry's transformation into Mr. Freeze is complete. But the ice is melting. Which, uh, wouldn't that mean the raw shocks would have unthawed and thus drag him down beneath the surface? Yeah, whatever. Uh, by the way, in the Wii version, you actually have to use the uh, nunchuck and Wiimote to swim, which looks quite ridiculous. Uh, here, though, you just have to press some buttons, which is considerably less uh, ridiculous, kind of. But again, uh, the swimming section does kind of serve a bit of a purpose, because you can actually look down and take a look to the environment below, like you'll see Harry's car accident. Our last memory that was shattered before us. And also, uh, look at the bed over there. So yeah, basically flashes throughout Harry's life. And considering the fact that, uh, Sybil just sent us a photo of our now adult daughter, I think we all know where this is headed. Harry died in that accident. Did he? Or something more? All oh, the symbolism. It's hurting my head. Please, make the hurt go away. Alright, we'll actually go into a bit more of a discussive phase as to all of this uh, once we get to the end credits, but... Yeah, I think it's painfully obvious to know that uh, Harry is dead. And while to some people that might seem like a twist you can call from a mile away at the start of the game, given how most psychological horror 
tends to put people on that specific mindset when they see a character die at the start of the movie. I blame Jacob's Ladder for that, for various reasons. Good enough movies it is, but I mean, I think that did kind of set the precedent for they've been dead all along stories. I mean, if not that, then at the very least, uh... Um, what was it called again? Oh, shit, I completely forgot the name. It was like the Yemlite Sh I, I don't want to... It's not Seven Pounds, because that's a terrible Will, Sm Will Smith movie. It was a... Uh, I don't think... It was it Seven? Like the one with Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment? I think it was. But anyway, like last time, Harry is rescued by his savior, Sybil Bennett, still the best character in the Silent Hill series. Ah, uh, Harry, you lucky bastard. Especially here, since he's not dying of hypothermia. <coughs> You're not stopping me! I'm not here to stop you! I didn't have to fish you out of the water, did I? Stop talking! You can't talk me out of this! I'm not here to stop you! I pulled your file at the station, I told you that, right? If you're telling the truth, this doesn't make sense. But I think you are telling the truth. I believe you think you're Harry Mason. Hell, I believe you are Harry Mason. But Harry Mason was killed in a car crash 18 years ago. You want answers? I guess they're waiting in there. That's the lighthouse? <sighs> Nothing's quite what you expect, is it? <sighs> I'm gonna stick with my gut from now on. <laughs> Would've saved us both a lot of trouble. Hope this works out for you. So, we now have our confirmation that Harry Mason was dead all along! Ooh. Uh, obviously playing on the ending of Silent Hill 1, or at least the bad ending, which was kind of considered non-canon and a kind of reference to Jacob's letter, but here's one thing I do want to point out before we uh, cap things off. This lighthouse area right here, this is Dr. Kaufman's office. Um, again, I've never seen a therapist in real life or been to a therapy place, but I mean, do... Do, do they usually have very ostentatious offices like this? I mean, it's pretty well furnished, but at the same time, like... Oh, by the way, over there you can also find the Never Forget True Happiness thing, except this time with Harry's picture in the locket. Uh, just figured I'd mention that. Anyway, enjoy the revelations. This is going nowhere. I'm spelling it out, but you're not listening. Your troubled school days? How you're conflicted about marriage? Your denial of death? The unfounded guilt? Abnormal sexuality? Eighteen years of denial. A whole universe of fantasy in that thick skull of yours. A skull teeming with agents of repression. Blind children clutching photos in the dark. Pale freaks goggle-eyed from watching home movies on loop. The term is complicated grief. But it's simple isn't it? A young girl. Her parents don't get along. She blames herself, as all children do. Then daddy dies. What's a girl to do? Deny that daddy died. Deny who daddy was. What seven-year-old actually knows who their parents are anyway? So she obsesses and obsesses over this fantasy dad propping up her make-believe with scraps, scraps of a happy life that never was, scraps of a father who never existed. Wake up! Your dad wasn't a hero. Wasn't your knight in shining armor. He was a human being. You never knew him. And you never will. The dad walking around in your head isn't even a ghost. He never existed. A Frankenstein's monster, a child's fantasy. But you're alive. Your mother is alive. She's not the monster you make her out to be. You need to live your life. Cheryl. so long. I always will be. Okay. 
So, that was a twist. Cheryl Mason was our protagonist the whole time. And now, we're gonna be seeing the video as it was meant to be seen. I was gonna say meant to be seen or meant to be played, but whatever. Now again, as I mentioned all the way back in part one, I am doing something a little bit special with this ending, but uh... Yeah. You know what, I, I think I'll just stay quiet and let you see it for yourself. So uh, enjoy, do's and doodas. You piece of shit! When are you gonna bring in some real money? <clears throat> you think you're crappy Shakespeare? Your piece of shit novels? No one even reads them! <clears throat> Be a man! Come on, fight back! I'm pathetic. To think I used to hang off your every word. Dickless waste of space! you filming me for? Am I supposed to dance for you? <laughs> Be a good girl for daddy. Go get him another drink, will you? Now, give me a damn beer! I wonder I drink with a family like this. Action. Come on then, girls. Introduce yourselves. I'm Michelle, and I'm Midwich High's prom queen. And our next star? <laughs> I'm Lisa. I'm a nurse. And I'm Harry Mason, famous author and seducer of prom queens and nurses. Can we be in your next book? Sure. Can you dedicate it to us? No. Nope. Dedications are always to my wife and daughter. It's only fair. <laughs> You'll be careful. Sure. Harry. We've said enough. Let's just... Sweetie, don't film this. You know this has nothing to do with you, right? Even though Mom and Dad don't love each other anymore, we both love you. And we always will. Oh, come on. And so, there we go. Now, the ending that I got for the game was called uh, Weak and Wicked, which was the one that you saw first. And again, basically how I think... Because again, what you saw there was all the endings, you know. And again, part of the reason why I think all of them are canon is for this reason. Weak and Wicked, which was uh, the ending that I got for the game first, I think this one takes place first because of the fact that, again, I think it kind of shows Dahlia and Harry's state of mind when they were married. Because again, all throughout the game, you saw subtext for them, you know, you know, wanting to be laid back, chill, have fun, and be a rock and rebel goth chick mixed with a laid back, free and easy dude sort of writer character. And again, I think because of that, because Harry and Dahlia had to mature into adults, one of them settled into this phase of life easily, the other one didn't. So Harry grew up to be this fun-loving dad, a bit more of a pushover, but all the same still somebody who enjoyed raising his daughter and having a bit of a family, even if he did spoil her a bit too much. It was Dahlia, I think, one who kind of had to take responsibilities into her own hands, this, you know, the sort of person who had to ostensibly be the breadwinner, given Harry's uh, rather flowery creative endeavour. And I mean, let's not kid ourselves, writing really doesn't pay that much professionally, unless of course you're on like a bestsellers list. So yeah, Dahlia was pissed, beat the shit out of him. Harry, in this instance, I could see turning to drinking, alcohol, sleeping around with women, which was ostensibly why we saw, you know, characters like Lisa and, uh, Michelle. You know, hence why they appeared in Cheryl's, uh, visions of, you know, people in trashy relationships, and ostensibly how they would have been perceived by other people. Now again, I'm guessing Dahlia eventually caught wind of this and eventually just got sick of Harry's behaviour, Two of them kept on getting into a row, the last happy memory they have of a family is when they visited Lakeside Amusement Park. But after that point, the spark was gone, there was no passion left, and thus, they separated. And that was of course the last thing that Cheryl saw of Harry before he died and was living with trauma ever since. And I think the game actually does a pretty decent job of highlighting this, because again, all throughout the game, a lot of the small subplots you saw, you know, with uh, Steve, you know, the subplot with John and Michelle, and you know, her days as a shoplifting punk teenager, 
I like to see that as basically us being able to see Cheryl's life as she grew up uh, through the town of Silent Hill itself, which I actually think was a pretty cool use of psychology. And again, it does make the story of Shattered Memories a really interesting one to revisit time and time again, because you can have so many different variables as to how she can turn out as a person, whether or not she was sexually replaced, Replaced, repressed, whether or not she was a little bit more of a, you know, a drink and drug addict, or whether or not she was just a normal person that had some trauma that she needed to deal with. I mean, again, Someone Who Shattered Memories, on a story perspective, I think is a pretty fantastic game. As far as gameplay is concerned, again, I will admit, this is definitely more so for casual fans and people who I'd say are more so of the ilk to try and play stuff like, you know, uh, the David Cage sort of Heavy Rain, or uh, Detroit, um, Beyond Two Human, or whatever sort of games. I completely fucked that up, but, uh, kind of pressed for time here. Again, I think if you were going to introduce, like, a non-gamer to the Silent Hill series, I think Shadow Memories would be the way to go. I mean, I would recommend also showing them the other games in the series, obviously, but I think this game especially, it's a good way to get people who aren't really too into horror into the Silent Hill series. And again, while this game might not be the scariest ever made, or probably the most in-depth, it is one that I do still enjoy, and especially coming from where I was back in 2009, where I absolutely hated the game for basically being, you know, something that ruined Silent Hill 1, I will admit, I came to love this game. So, uh, yeah, Shadow Memories gets a pass from me, and, uh, I suppose that there's really not much else to be said. The game does have its weak links, which I've brought up all throughout the commentary, but other than that, can't really complain. So, that's uh, pretty much all she wrote. I guess as far as commentary is concerned, next up for the Scully commentary bonanza, before we enter the uh, October season, I'm thinking about taking a look at the Simpsons Hidden Run, so on that note, I'm Solid Scully, keep a new medal, and well, see you next time, dudes and dudettes. Bye bye This... this is it. After all we've said, all we've discussed, you honestly believe that your father was abducted by aliens? It made more sense when you were talking about cults and demons. This whole town, it's really a giant spaceship. James? <sighs> Wrong day again. See you tomorrow, James. One of my couple's therapy patients. Haven't seen his wife in a while. Uh, where were we? My mother was a bitch. Go on. I'm, I'm listening. listening.